Hello, my name is Natalie and I'm from the Early Years Alliance and today I'm here to talk to you about how you can support your children's communication and language at home. Children need lots and lots of opportunities to both hear sounds and see, so watch your face and see how those sounds are formed for them to be able to start to make sense of them. And this is a really key skill that they need to develop so that they can develop their speech. We live in a very noisy world and our home environments can be quite loud. And if we have lots of um, devices going, lots of electronics on in our home, televisions on, radios on and those sorts of things all the time as background noise, it can be really difficult for small children to distinguish between those different sounds and to process those, which is all part of their learning. So it's really important that we try and provide them with lots of times throughout the day where it's quiet, where they can concentrate on listening for specific sounds so that their brains can start to process those and through that then, then be able to imitate those sounds for themselves. They need to be able to hear all of those different sounds to make sense of them and once they start to do that they will start to recognise them as separate sounds. And this is something that they need to develop for speech. They need to know what those lots and lots of different small sounds are so that they can start to piece those together. And this is also really key for those early reading and writing skills. They need lots of conversations. Talk to your children as much as you can. Hold those conversations with them. And you can hold conversations with a pre-verbal child. So if you're talking to your child in quite a conversational way, um, often imitating that return on their behalf whilst they start to build that up for themselves, this can be really helpful for them and really give them that sense of belonging within the family unit. They need lots of imaginative play as well. This is a great opportunity for them to really explore their world around them and start to think about things that they've seen in their day-to-day -day life they imitate them in their play through their imagination and that helps them to process and understand them. And they also need lots of different interactions. So those interactions uh, with siblings at home, with different family members are really key in building all of these language and communication skills. So what I'd like to do for you today is just show you a couple of quick ideas of small activities and things that you can have set up at home that you can dip into throughout your day to support your child's learning. So the first thing I'm going to show you is our magic sound box. So what I've got is just a wooden box, a cardboard shoe box, um, a cereal box, and you can access it through the opening at the top would be absolutely fine, whatever you've got. And what we're going to do is create a little game for your children. And this is something that you can adapt for different ages and stages. So we could do this right from our pre-verbal babies, who are just starting to babble and make those um, small sound units right through to an older child who is holding those conversations. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a little routine, something that they come to expect every time this box comes out. So I will start by modelling for you what I would do for, um, for a baby, for a younger toddler, a child who is just learning to make those sounds for themselves. And I would start with using the same phrasing and rhyme every time. So I would say to them, turn, turn, turn the box around, turn the box and wait for the sound. And then I'm going to open my box to let the sound escape. What could be in the box today? What makes a raw sound? Can you make that sound? What's in the box? It's a tiger! Raw! Can you make the tiger roar? So what I'm doing is I'm modelling for the child those sounds. I'm giving them the opportunity to return those sounds, to imitate them and make those sounds for themselves. And then I'm connecting it with something for them. So I'm giving them an object that they can connect that with. <coughs> 
The way that I might do this for a slightly older child is to give them an option. So to put several items in the box and then allow them to open the box for themselves after I've imitated that sound and ask them to choose that item. Adding another layer for their learning and development for a slightly older child, say a preschool child or a child is just starting school, we might start to talk about the initial sounds there as well. So we might have our ooh, 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 monkey sound. They might go into the box and choose the monkey. And then as an extension of that learning, I then might talk to them about that initial sound of that word. So, mmm, monkey. Mmm, monkey starts with mmm. So I'm helping them to differentiate and separate those initial sounds. So some early phonics work for them as well. So something we can all do together as a family or you can do separately with different ages and stages. But your children will come to understand that that's what this box is for. You can also do it with no items in there at all, particularly for a smaller child. You can just imitate that sound escaping from the box and see if they can recognise what that sound might be. So magic sound box, little really easy activity that you can do at home with your children. You could put as many different items as you wanted into that box. The next thing I want to show you is just something that you can use with your children to initiate those really important conversations. Now this might be something that you would want to print off and have on some little cards that you keep easily at hand or you can do it on your devices. Okay, so what I've got is a series of screenshots that I've put onto my tablet that would represent different parts of a daily routine. So I've got um, a child eating there. So that could be our breakfast time. I've got a child getting dressed. I've got a family having a walk with their dog. And I've got a child there brushing her teeth. So all of these different things that are part of that daily routine are things that are going to happen in your household every day. And what you can do is use this as a starting point for those really key conversations. So you can access your images and you can talk with your children about what they can see happening in that picture. And what that then does is it gives them an opportunity to approach their day, to talk to you about the things and the experiences that they have had and relate it to their own experience. And by doing that, we're allowing them to process those different things that have happened and really help them to be able to develop the vocabulary that they need to articulate those thoughts and feelings. If you have a child who attends um, ordinarily playgroups or nursery, you might have an image in there that represents that time. This might be a really key way of you sitting down and talking about what they've done during their day at nursery when they haven't been with you because they will have lots of things that they want to share. So a little tool to get us talking, get us focused, and give your children that really key conversation time. So you could have this on an electronic device or you could have it on some little printed uh, cards or just on some paper. You could even use photographs of your own family. So you could take some photographs and use those um, as your talking point. A really nice thing to be doing at the moment is maybe having photographs of different family members that you're not spending as much time with right now um, and looking at those photographs. So there's people we can't see but we would love to see Sharing those photographs with your children gives them that starting point um, to talk about those thoughts and feelings. The next tool that I would like to share with you is something that doesn't need any resources at all, but it's a really simple framework for how we can talk with our children. And this is right from those really little babbling, making sounds, pre-verbal children, right through to our children who are starting to hold those conversations with us quite capably. And what that is, is a framework that follows stop, look, listen, think, respond. Okay, so everyday situation with your child, the first thing that you can do is stop. Stop whatever it is that you are doing in that moment and give your child your full and undivided attention. I'm not talking about the whole of the day, I'm talking about little moments throughout the day, which we can just take those little moments and give that focus towards developing your child's communication and language skills. This is going to be so much of a benefit for them. So we stop what we are doing and we look. So we look to see what our child is doing in that moment. 
And then we're going to listen. So we're going to listen for any of those sounds that they might be making. We're going to listen for any of those words and sentences that they are trying to articulate for themselves that might not be very clear at the moment. So we've stopped, we've looked and we've listened. If we have a child at this point, the first part of our thinking process is going to be, what would my child want to say? What are they looking at? What are they likely to be thinking in that moment? And what we're going to do is we're going to respond. And the way we're going to respond is firstly, for our younger child, is we are going to um, narrate for them. We're going to talk about what we can see. So as an example, uh, we might be out on a walk and we might have come across um, a bumblebee on a bush. So we might say, oh, look, you found a bumblebee. Can you see his yellow and black stripes? So we're saying things that are relevant in that moment for our child and we're giving them that language. So the first way we can respond is we can narrate for them. We can say out loud the things that we are observing that it's quite likely your child is thinking. The other way that we can respond is we can repeat back what your child says. So if your child says something or attempts to say something in a not particularly clear way, then what you can do for them is you can repeat it back to them clearly. So you can repeat what they've said in a clear way. The next thing that you can do to support that is you can add to it. So you can elaborate on what they said by adding a few extra words. So if a slightly older child, it might be something like, yes, it's a bumblebee. He's got very small wings. So what I'm doing there is the child perhaps tried to say, it's a bumblebee. It may not have been clear. I'm giving them that recognition that actually what they've attempted to say was correct. I'm repeating it back to them clearly so that they know that they chose the right words. They're just not quite there yet with forming those sounds. And then what I've done for them is I've added a little bit more. And the more that we do that, the more capable they will get with adding those new words into their vocabulary. So we're going to stop, look, listen, think and respond. And by using that as a framework repeatedly throughout your day, you are going to really help your child with developing their language and communication skills. So a really easy one with absolutely no resources. The last thing I'd like to show you is an example of a talking tray. So this is something that we could have out in our homes all of the time, maybe on a coffee table or in a child's play area, somewhere where it's accessible for them with things that they are safe to explore for themselves. So think about the age and stage of your child uh, with the things that you are leaving out, because this is going to be something that's available all of the time. And what I've got in her here is a little tree themed one. Um, I've got some picture cards of some different leaves. I've got a book about trees. I've got a little bit of garden foliage. So I've got some leaves and some grasses there that I've just picked from the garden. I've got a couple of uh, little log slices and a couple of pine cones. I've got things that are all different textures, different sizes, different colours, different smells. So it's very sensory for your children. We've got lots of different shapes there as well. And what this means is what we've got a brilliant resource that we can just keep coming back to whenever we're passing it. So maybe we just have two minutes with our child and we sit down together with this tray and we talk about what's in here and we pick them up and we feel them. We talk about whether they're smooth or rough. We talk about the different shades. So maybe we talk about the light green and the dark green. We maybe talk about the differences. We could count, so we could think about the different parts of the leaf and how the two leaves could be different. Um, we could read the book together, nice short books. Short stories are good to have in here or short information books, things that you can pick up and they're gonna get that repetition. So if this is something that you have out for a week, maybe we're gonna read this 10, 20 times throughout that week, but what they're getting then is that really key repetition of that key vocabulary that is held within that book. So a little talking tray, 
something we keep coming back to, but something your child can go to by themselves as well. So they've got the opportunity to practice those new words and sounds that they are practicing when you sit down and look at your talking tray together. Um, I would try and follow your child's interests. So if your child is mad on diggers, get some little diggers in there. Maybe a book that's something about diggers. Um, maybe make some little tyre tracks on a piece of paper and leave those in there, a little bit of mud or sand. Um, maybe make up a little sensory bottle by um, sealing a little bit of mud inside an old plastic bottle and just taping it around the top. So it's not something that's messy, but it's something that they can explore and have a look at together. So talking tray, really lovely thing to just have out in your home to boost your child's language and communication skills. So hopefully you've gained a couple of ideas there of things that you could try at home with your children um, to support those early language and communication skills, whatever their age. It's all very, very adaptable. Um, hope to see you soon for another video. Um, if you'd like any more ideas of things that you could do with your children at home, then you can head across to our website, which is www.familycorner.co.uk.